The article also raises saints who allegedly performed abortions. Hmm. I read that and I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Oh, okay. Um, let's see what they have. Well, here's what they write. This is, again, a quote from the author of the outline, the article in the outline. In the hagiography of St. Bridget's life, the strength of her faith that enables her to perform a miraculous abortion that restores, I'm sorry, um, didn't, I think I skipped a word there. In the hagiography of St. Bridget's life, the strength of her faith that enables her to perform a miraculous abortion that restores virtue to a horny nun. Sorry for the language there, but that's them to give you the direct quote. Yeah, I think they're missing a word in there. I mean, I know I copied and pasted, so it seems like they're missing something. But in other, in other words, they're, they're just saying, look, um, the um, saint performs miraculously an abortion here and restores a nun who fell into sin and became pregnant. They go on, quote, a certain woman who had taken the vow of chastity fell through youthful desire of pleasure and her womb swelled with child. Bridget, exercising the most potent strength of her ineffable faith, blessed her, causing the child to disappear without coming to birth and without pain. Of course, they don't give you any citations here. No, they, they don't. I don't give you any actual sources, um, especially not a primary source, but not even a secondary source. Um, now, I'm not saying that you, you can't actually find a hagiographer who, who gives this account, but what I'm saying is you wouldn't know it based on what they gave you. They just say, so-and-so says this, and they don't ever tell you where so-and-so actually said that so that I can go and verify. But again, notice the saint blessed the pregnant nun causing the child to disappear without coming to birth and without pain. Is that exactly an abortion? No, but I see the connection that they're making there. You know, even though I would say, well, that, I don't think that's an abortion, but I see why you would say that that's at least substantially similar to an abortion, right? I mean, with an abortion, there's life and then there's no longer life. And, and in this case, there is I guess life there and then it's no longer there. So it would be in, in their, um, in their reasoning, a, an abortion. Uh, okay. Even if I want to grant that, let's just grant that for the moment that, uh, this hagiographer, um, says that this saint, St. Bridget performed an abortion. Let, let's just go ahead and grant that for a moment here. And this isn't the only saint. They, they bring up a few, but I'm just going to focus on one for the sake of brevity. Here's something that I, a few things that I want to offer in response. Here is something from Dr. Paul Byron, a lecturer at the University College Dublin. He says this, and by the way, um, I will also include the link to this. You can find it at Catholic News, News Agency. He gives this in an interview with Catholic News Agency. Again, this is actually an, a scholar who lectures in this field. He says, there is no credible evidence that any Irish saints were involved in any form of abortion. So he, he wants to say, look, th this actually isn't abortion, what you're pointing us to here with you know, St. Bridget. So take that for what it's worth. You're a scholar who's in the field doesn't see that as an abortion. But okay, let's just say that the scholar is wrong and that there are more points of commonality here before um, with an act, act of abortion and what we see with St. Bridget. Let's just go ahead and say, okay, well, that's not good enough. He mentions this. These stories are folklore, legend, and political anecdote which was demonstra demonstrably compiled long after, usually some centuries after, the saint in question had lived. This was compiled, the hagiographer, in the case of St. Bridget. Now, in, in some of the other cases, it was compiled a good 600 years later. In the case of St. Bridget, this was compiled in the 7th century, so several hundred years, if I recall correctly. I think St. Bridget was in the 5th century, so... Yeah, several hundred years later, the hagiographer writes about what St. Bridget did here. So let's say just roughly 200 years later. So 200 years later, somebody writes what St. Bridget did 200 years previous based on legends. How reliable is that? I don't really find that convincing. That just tells me that a hagiographer 200 years later wrote down a legend about St. Bridget. That doesn't really seem very reliable to me. Not, not, not enough to really convince me that a saint 
performed an abortion. I'm going to need a little bit more than that. At best, that just tells me that the hagiographer, 200 years later, thought that what St. Bridget did was, number one, authentic, and that maybe he even thought it was morally permissible to do that. That doesn't really mean much to me, because I can show you at the same time, in contemporary thought among the Irish people, they actually believed that abortion at any stage of pregnancy, regardless of when insolment happened, at any stage of pregnancy, abortion was sinful. You can actually see this in the 6th century penitential of Finian. It assigns a penance for abortion, and it doesn't say, oh, at this particular stage. No, period. For abortion, it assigns a penance. Now, you might say, okay, well, it's not as grave as, as the penance isn't as significant as some of the other penances. Okay. All right. But they still thought it was sinful and gravely immoral, right? Maybe not as much as something else, but they still thought it was gravely immoral, right? They didn't think it was good, did they? No. So telling me that it well, it's not as bad as that, all right. So, well, I know I stole your car, Michael, but I mean, at least I didn't rape your whole family and murder them. Uh, okay, but you still stole my car. Can you... <laughs> Can you give me my car back? That's not okay. Uh, telling me that just something isn't as severe as something else doesn't really m mean that, okay, well, it's it's now morally good. No, it's, it's still gravely evil. They just thought it wasn't as grave as something else. Uh, all right. That doesn't show me that they thought that abortion is now permitted. Keep your eyes on the ball. They wanted to say that the church taught or that the church accepted abortions and that they're good that this wasn't something gravely immoral is that backing it up pointing me to a penitential list that assigns a lesser penance to this sin compared to something else does that back that up no 